Sorry guys, I live in a very noisy street. Hopefully there's not too much background noise for you guys. But as you can see right now, I just kicked off school. I'm still in my school uniform. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be eel fishing. What I've been doing is I've just been burling out little bits of bait, little bits of prawn, little bits of fish and all that. And basically that's 101 how to attract eels to one spot. Now I just wanna give you guys a little bit of an overview, a little bit of a fact sort of thing about the eels we're trying to catch this video and the eels we were catching last eel video. The species of eel we're actually trying to catch in this video are what's known as speckled longfin eels and I of course get that name because of the speculation that runs along their body. Now one of the coolest facts about eels is just their life cycle. Basically what they do is they spend the majority of their life, almost the entirety of their life, running around, swimming around in these ponds until they get to a pretty decent size of about 1 to 1.5 meters. When they reach about that size, that's actually when they head out to the ocean and make their way from these ponds, crossing up to about 300 meters of land to get out into the ocean. Basically, what they do when they're out in the ocean is they head to some random location out in the Pacific. We don't know where it is, really. It's somewhere near PNG or New Caledonia. They all head out there and they all breed. And then the babies get born out there and they slowly make their way back to these ponds. Sort of like turtles if I were to compare it to any sort of animal that you guys would know about. And every single eel featured in this video and the last eel video has made that entire journey. Even the real little ones. Now you might be wondering, oh, you know, the real little ones make it such a big journey? How old would they have to be? Well, even those real little ones are insanely old. Eels are actually incredibly slow growing, only growing about one to two centimeters per year. So of course, an uh, 80 centimeter eel could be anywhere from 40 to 80 years old. And that massive eel we caught last video, that 120 centimeter dude, that 120 centimeter giant could be easily 60 to 120 years old, which is just insane. Not every eel gets to make that life cycle. Obviously, they can get caught and eaten, or you know, a bull shark could get them on their way out. Or they can actually get trapped in these ponds. They can get trapped in landlocked ponds. And it's those eels that actually get massive. They've actually been known to get up to about three meters long. Three meter long eels, that is just massive. Just think about how old one of those would be. I mean, easily 150 to 300 years old. Obviously in the right conditions, that growth rate is gonna be sped up. They can actually, in the right conditions, grow about five to 10 centimeters per year. But even then, a three meter eel, that's still quite old. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 That does be seeming like possible eel. Just wait for him to eat it. Got a decent sized bait on. Then what I do when he's taking it just like this. Dropped it maybe. Nah, he's not dropped it. Yeah. One. Two. Three. Yep, yeah, that's an eel. Yeah, that's a definite eel. You can really feel those head shakes. Oh, yeah, there we are. Really swimming towards us. Oh, yeah. Swimming around quite erratically, actually. There we are. There's Neil for a catch and cook. And he looks good size as well. Alright, there we are. How big is he? <laughs> Oh, there we are. Still very, very green. But yeah, I told you guys, burling up is where it's at because that did not take long at all. I didn't want to show you guys the euthanasia of the dude, so we've got him in the fridge right now. I've just come back here to pick up all my stuff that I left here. But um, yeah, I'm a bit iffy on taking eels just because of, well, like I said before, how old they are. But hey, I mean, he's going to feed a lot of people. I mean, just then, my mum literally said that she wanted to have a bit, so... Yeah, it's gonna f not just feed me, a lot of people, and the rest of them is gonna be used. None of them is gonna go to waste. But anyway, that's really, that's really it. Sorry about the lack of eel fighting footage. If you want to see some more eel fishing, 
I'd recommend go and check out my um, monster eel caught out Australian freshwater pond. I think that's what I called it. But right now, I'm just gonna pack up all my stuff, take it home, go to bed, watch some Netflix or all that, and then tomorrow we'll cook them up on the smoker. But yeah, that was really simple. I, dead ass only been here for like five minutes, so. Alrighty guys, so what we've got right here is just the eel that we caught yesterday. Here's the little chunks of him that we're gonna smoke up. You might be wondering where the rest of the eel is, and he's right here in this container, also nice and slimy. The reason we're not cooking him up is just because we're not sure how it's gonna taste. It's always good to have a backup plan, especially with such a long living and slow growing creature that eels are. You wanna have sort of a backup plan for the rest of the carcass if you're not gonna like it. So of course this part here is gonna be bait. So every part of him is gonna be used. And yeah, we can try it nice and smoked. We've got a nice little brine right here to smoke them up in. Got some brown sugar and some salt in there. Just gonna put these little chunks of eel in there, ready for the smoke up. And yeah, only little chunks, like I said, just because we're not sure how he's gonna taste. And then yeah, the rest of it is gonna be baits so and none of them is going to waste. There we are there. There's the eel right there. Thank you for your food, bud. I'm just gonna put the methylated spirits in this little spot right here. What flavor of wood chip are we going to add? I think it's smelly, mate. Right? Careful, but it doesn't look like it's lit, but it is. Mm -hmm. We'll put the lid on, and that should start igniting the. Uh, we'll see the smoke come out of it shortly. Yeah, all right. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks like that one. Yeah, that's done. Look at that, guys. That actually looks really good, I'm going to be honest. They're probably stuck to these a bit, but they should come off. Oh, no. oh my god, look at that. That actually looks really good, if I'm going to be honest. Alrighty guys, so we got it set up right on this little table. I'm just going to have a little bite here. And let's just see how it is, really. texture to it. Sort of like porky sort of texture. Let's see if that makes it a bit better. Oh yeah, I forgot I was eating off the spine. And half a bit of salt, that's actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing special, but I mean, if I was starving, I wouldn't mind eating this. Gonna see what mum thinks. What are you gonna think, mum? I don't know yet. Yeah, it's a bit chewy. Yeah, it's a bit chewy. No, it doesn't taste like mud. It's definitely no elements of it mud in it. No. You can taste the smoke a lot yeah. though. You can taste a lot of that. Quite smoky, it's quite mm. smoked was. Mm. A bit jelly sort of. Yeah. So more chewy. Alrighty guys, I'm just finishing off the rest of this eel, eating some of this flesh off the bone, off that backbone. To be honest, considering how old they are, I probably wouldn't consider it worth it to take them. I reckon I'm going to be catch and release from now on. But I also reckon that it's important if you are going to take one for shark bait or whatever, that you do eat a part of it, just so I know it's less wasteful. But yeah, always have a backup plan for the other half in case you can't stomach it and only cook up a small amount and have a backup plan for the other half just, yeah, and just in case you can't stomach it. But yeah, it's definitely not bad. It's not bad. It's okay.
That's that's what I would rate it at. A five out of ten or a six out of ten.